In a recent video on Dolly Khanna, I spoke in reference to how she uses the 30-day moving average to decide if it makes sense to invest further in a stock or to completely exit from it. Now, I didn't explain anything in that video about moving averages. Maybe I wasn't paying attention, but it did make Kunal curious. And this video is a product of his curiosity and his detailed research on it. So let's start from the top. What is moving average? Okay, so think of a stock price or an index value or just about anything, including the sunny to cloudy weather in Delhi. And let's define it in terms of these simple number boxes. So there are five of them here and this average is to 4.8. But we're not talking about static averages, right? We're talking about moving averages. And now let's say a sixth box comes in, which means the calculation shifts from the second box to the sixth and the average number is now 5.6. Again, if the seventh box turns out to be a two, then the average will go down to a 4.6. And as you might have guessed it by now, over a period of time, a pattern starts showing up. The same methodology can be applied on stocks. And if I were to extract the five day moving average for HDFC Bank, then it's nothing but the average of the last five trading sessions, which as on 22nd of September, 2023 comes to 1,587 rupees and 49 paise. Now, just like the number block example, we can continue to go backwards in time and we'll get a series of five day moving averages, which when plotted on a chart looks something like this. Of course, we can always go longer. And this is how the 15 day moving average chart would look like. Here's the 50 day chart. And this is HDFC Bank's 200 DMA. So you can pick any number of days as per your comfort, but 15, 20, 30, 50, 100, and the 200 DMA are the more common ones. Which brings us to the question, why are moving averages even used? And the simple answer is moving averages support the concept of mean reversion. Let me explain this. So much like gravity, anything that goes up must eventually come down which means if an asset's current market price is way higher than its 50-day or 200-day moving average, then the presumption is that this price will revert back to the mean value of these averages at some point in time. So it's a way of taking advantage of euphoria or pessimism until everything becomes normal. And I think it's this simplicity that makes moving average a very popular tool amongst many investors and traders. Okay, so if this part is clear, let's understand what Kunal means when he uses the term potential value zone. For this, I'll use the Nifty 50, and this is how the index has progressed over the last 25 years. Now let's build a 50-day moving average on top of this, and one can observe that while the trend is very much in the same direction, the 50-day line, the black line, is a lot smoother, while the blue line, the index values, are a lot more meandering and a bit rough around the edge. This is exactly what we are looking for, and the value zone is nothing but a specific range around the 50-day moving average, where the index value or the stock often receives some support in terms of price. For instance, look at the 2008-2009 period when the Nifty 50 dipped so much that it left us a nice big crater. And to put it as a strategy, when the index or stock price enters this value zone, investors can look at it as a potential buying opportunity. The same thing happened in 2002, in 2003, again in 2012, sometime in 2016, and of course in 2020. And we all know how each of those stories carried on giving investors excellent returns. You can do the same exercise with any stock of your choice. And as I found out, companies like HDFC Life Insurance, Wipro Limited, and Hero Motor Corp did offer some value zone opportunities quite recently. I think there's also a behavioral angle to all this because when the stock price or the Nifty 50 is going down, our minds are often cluttered as to what we should be doing and using moving averages to support our investment thesis can be an excellent way of clarifying things. Now, one of the questions you might have for me and particularly on that Nifty 50 chart is that if the 50 day moving average is only giving us five potential value zones over a 25 year period, then why not use a shorter duration like a 30 DMA or even a 15 day moving average? Well, it's a very valid question. And when I tried it on a 15 day basis, I did come across a lot more potential value zones. But the shorter you go, there is the volatility problem, which is why it's generally preferred to stay somewhere in the middle, at least when it comes to indices. But if you are evaluating a stock, then perhaps you can look at a 20 or a 30 day moving average. 
I'm leaving this part a little open-ended because different investors, different traders use their own customized approach, which I guess is a function of constant experimenting and testing. However, it does not dilute the fact that using moving averages to identify value zones offers that extra bit of support to one's investing decisions. And if you're looking for a platform that can keep up with your requirements, then do explore the Fisdom app, which has been made keeping the trading community in mind. The app comes with a new and improved search bar, dedicated sections for stocks, ETFs, bonds, and derivatives, market watch with analyst views on top rated stocks, smart screeners, multiple watch lists, and integration with small keys, advanced charting tools, options chain analysis, MTF and T plus five trading facilities, customer support, and a freedom plan that comes with zero brokerage. There's a lot here, so download the Fisdom app today and experience a whole new way of trading. As always, the link is available in this video's description. All right, now that we have an understanding of moving averages, let's take this a step further and see how we can use the 50-day moving average as an investing strategy. So there are five steps to this, and it starts by first identifying the universe of stocks that you want to analyze. For this, you can use screeners, stock filters, themes, basically much of the stuff that's already available on the Fisdom app. And the idea here should be to have a diverse set of 30, 40, 50 companies that you are comfortable with at least on a fundamental basis. Step two is to look for stocks whose price has just crossed their 50-day moving average. Again, this is something that can be extracted from any standard screener. And the underlying premise is that these particular stocks are in an uptrend or have recently turned bullish, which can then be interpreted as a sign of potential growth in the share price. The next step, step three, is to invest in these stocks when the price goes above the 50-day moving average and one should remain in the trade until the stock price cuts below the 50 DMA levels. So effectively, we are investing upon the indication that the bullish period for the stock has started and we exit upon the signal that the stock's bearish period has now commenced. The next step in the process is, of course, to monitor the stocks regularly for their price and their moving average. And finally, it's important to diversify this portfolio because at the end of the day, everything has some element of speculation to it and no one can guarantee any future performance. So these are the five steps of an uncomplicated moving average strategy. And if these steps are clear to you, then let's understand this with some data. And to keep it simple, I'm going to apply this on the Nifty 50 index. Now, since most viewers on my channel are investors and not traders, the basic objective of our moving average strategy will be to identify certain points in time when an investment can be made with a higher probability of success. As a process, this requires us to identify when the Nifty 50 goes above its 50-day moving average. And as a number, this means I would have invested no less than 19 times over the last four, four and a half years. In fact, in this table here, Kunal has marked the months of investment and also Nifty's then month end value. And a 10,000 rupee investment in each of these 19 months would have given us a corpus of 2,86,000, which comes to an XIRR of 16.4%. Comparatively, if I had done an SIP during the same time period, that is 10,000 rupees every month from January of 2019 until September of 2023, then my annualized return would have been a tad lower at 16.1%. Now, this is important because Kunal and I did multiple studies and what came out is that the concept of moving averages works a lot better on stocks rather than using it on an index like the Nifty 50. As a quick example, we applied it on a small grouping of five stocks from five different industries. And using the moving average strategy, we were able to extract a much higher return as compared to systematically investing in that portfolio or if we had invested that money in the Nifty 50 index. So as an exercise, I'll urge you to try this out on a couple of stocks. And please be a little patient with whichever trading platform you use, because the first time you try this, it'll be a little difficult to figure out what the different symbols and terminology stand for. All right, now let's learn about the golden crossover strategy, which is pretty much an extension of the 50 day moving average. So the golden crossover is a popular technical analysis strategy that utilizes two moving averages, which is typically the 50 day moving average and the 200 day moving average. The objective of the strategy is to identify potential shifts in a stock's price trend and to put it simply, a golden crossover is created when the 50 day moving average crosses above the 200 day moving average. 
This transition indicates that the short-term price trend, which is explained by the 50 DMA, is becoming more positive and that more people are interested in buying that stock. So it signals a bullish trend and for an investor, it's a reasonably good opportunity to invest in that stock. For example, Infosys has had multiple golden crossovers in the last five years, with one in 2018, after which the stock price went up by 54% over the next two years. Then there was one in July of 2020, which led to a 150% jump. And then there seems to be one happening right now, and it will be interesting for me to see how this one turns out. So as I've said earlier, these moving average strategies work a lot better with stocks and expectedly when I tried it on the Nifty 50, it gave me an XIRR of exactly 12%, which is just par for the course. Now related to what we have learned so far, there are a couple more things I want to touch upon, which I think is very important for all of us to know. The first observation is that the distance between the price and moving averages, and one can see that in this chart, this gap between the Nifty 50 and its 200 DMA has never been above 19%. We even backtested this data over the last 15-20 years, and barring a few outliers, the gap between the Nifty 50 and the 200 DMA was generally between 7 and 12% which means if the gap between these two lines is a lot higher, let's say it's 18, 19 or 20 percent, then this can be looked at as a sell signal. And if you don't want to exit, it's clearly a message to the investor that one should be cautious now and it's probably better to wait for the markets to cool down. A second observation and a very interesting one is with regards to the strength of the market and moving averages can definitely give you a hint or two. For instance, the markets are currently at an all-time high and that's pretty much when a fear sets in amongst many investors and there's always this chirping about market weakness and that doomsday is just around the corner. However, if we were to look at it from a 50 DMA perspective, then for a majority of the Nifty 50 companies, about 70% of them, well, they have a current market price that is above the 50 DMA, which signals that the market is still strong, at least as per technical indicators. So this is one of the ways to check for market strength. And if I put everything together, and from what we have seen, it won't be wrong to say that moving averages as a strategy can be a very valuable tool, not just for traders, but also for investors like you and me. In this video, we looked at how this simple yet effective strategy can be used to identify potential value zones, how it can help us decide the ideal points of entry, and how moving averages can give us insights into market sentiments. There's obviously more to learn, but I, for one, would be keen on using moving averages with far better intent as a part of my broader investing toolkit. I sincerely hope you found some parts of this session useful. Please do like this video, do subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, please drop it in the comments box below. Do share this video and I'll see you three days from now. Until then. Thank you.